and the peace of the Lord be with you, and good morning. This is our devotion for Wednesday, May 17th, and um, our reading for today is Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. So Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 20, 23, very consistent uh, reading with uh, with the uh, ascension, so we'll, we'll dig into that. And I uh, will follow the morning order, page 295 in the hymnal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. All right. Um, Ephesians chapter 1, beginning at verse 15. For this reason, because I have heard your faith, uh, heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your heart enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the glorious, excuse me, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his great might that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who, uh, of, who fills all in all. Let us pray. Uh, blessed God, our Heavenly Father, we, uh, we give thanks to you, and um, we thank you that you are the, the, the Father of glory. We pray that you would give us the, the spirit of, of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you, and that our eyes would be enlightened, and that we would know the hope to which you have called us, the, the riches of your glorious inheritance, and what is your immeasurable greatness of power toward, toward us who believe, according to the, the working of your great might that you worked in Christ, raising him from the dead and seating him at your right hand, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but in the one to come, knowing that you put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all, and that you have worked all this, that we might have life and salvation and um, enjoy in you and the promise of the uh, eternity in your presence uh, and the goodness and holiness that is yours as you live and reign one god father son and holy spirit now and forever amen um okay so uh here here paul is talking about uh the the the, the joy that he has with the ephesian church um he, he heard of their faith and and their love and, and and what a wonderful thing you know and faith of course works itself out in love you know you can't separate uh can't separate two proper love can't exist without faith and and proper faith doesn't exist without love flowing forth from it right so so that's uh those two those two go hand in hand they are not not opposed in any way the ways that we would want to oppose them actually are are related to to our unbelief and and um and we make a division there where we ought not. And what sin does is it divides, right? So, so just a reminder to to, to always put those those together. Um, not that we don't distinguish them. We do, and that's very important. We are saved by our faith. We're saved by faith, we could say. Uh, not not faith as in a work, but but saved by faith. Uh, not saved by our love, but by Christ's love. But the two always go hand in hand, right? Okay. In any case. Uh, and so he gives thanks to God. He says, I do not get, cease to give thanks for you, remembering in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. Uh, and this, of course, connects to, to rightly to, as he gets into the ascension, that Christ sends that spirit to the church and giving giving that, that wisdom and, and knowledge of him, the spirit, you know, revealing Christ to us and, and Christ revealing the Father. And giving us the, the the eyes enlightening of, of our hearts and our eyes, um, in the eyes of our hearts, right? That that we know what is we know what is the hope to which He has called us. Um, you know that 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 hope and the forgiveness of sins, that hope in life and salvation, and the riches of His glory and glorious inheritance in the saints, the the promise of His eternal kingdom, and and what is the immeasurable greatness of of His power toward us who believe. Um, According to the working of his great might that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. 
Uh, so let's start with that because it also is continuing with the seating at the right hand. But the power of what God has done, raising Christ from the dead, the power of what God has done through the weakness of the cross, right? The weakness of God dying for our sins. Um, but that being how God works in his power, being found in weakness. And um, the, the weakness being the, 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 the power by which he has forgiven our sins. The greatest, the greatest power of all, the forgiveness of our sins, the meriting of our forgiveness and, and, and winning for us freedom and life and salvation in that. And then, um, and then um, providing that inheritance through that where we can stand again in his presence and in his holiness and that, and that goodness that comes from that. What, what great and wonderful power. And then... The great might that he worked when uh, when he seated Christ at his right hand in the heavenly places, so that Christ would would share in the rule, in the power of that rule, right, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age but also in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet, and he gave him as head over all things to the church. Uh, and so there's this rule of Christ, um, and, and so actually we kind of see it here. There's the, the rule over, over all authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but uh, but un, uh, in the one to come and all things under his feet. So there's that power. We call that the, the power of the, the kingdom of the, the left. That's the, 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 the earthly authorities. And, and, um, and we say Christ, um, so we say Christ reigns, right? That he, he, he reigns in, in, in three kingdoms. Um, the first is the kingdom of power that is this rule where he where he he works all things in this creation still to his good even though it's broken even though our sin has corrupted it even though um, the devil was given this dominion the devil was playing checkers and God's playing something beyond chess right I say that somewhat, somewhat regularly excuse me that, that God is still able to work these things and um, and that's in his power that's just in his pure might and, and, and omnipotence, right? And then, um, and then there's this this kingdom of the right, uh, and we call that the the kingdom of grace, where he rules all things in the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all, in all, right? Christ ascending, filling all things in that ascension, being present in all things in that ascension, and um, but 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 in that, working all all this this good to. To his church, right? Um, he works all things to the good of those who love him, and and, and the promise then of his kingdom of grace, and 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 um, you know you actually see this because in, 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 to put this in context, you see this in, in where this continues because it continues in chapter two, uh, and, and you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, but now Christ through power, and I'm going to kind of paraphrase this in context. Now Christ through power has, has given you his grace, uh, for it is by grace that you have been saved. Right, and um, yeah, you walked uh, in the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, living in the passions of your flesh, carrying out the desires of your body, you know, living like children of wrath under sin, like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy in His power, freed you, and that's His grace. Right, the grace worked by that spirit, the, the spirit bringing bringing you forgiveness of sins and life and salvation through through the means of grace, through the through the waters of baptism, bearing you in Christ's death and, and resurrection, bearing your sins and his, his death and, and giving you that forgiveness, and, um, and, then, and then him raising you to new life in him, and, and him speaking that forgiveness to you over and over again in his, in, in his absolution, the divine service, and then, uh, and then feeding you with that in, in his body and blood, and that all of that, this, this grace that you would then finally live in his kingdom of glory, where that, that will, there will, will, will be with him in eternity. And, and of course, you know, as we look forward to, to heaven, it's, it's this, this holiness that we have in Christ that is the joy of, of heaven. Um, and not, not the holiness in itself for its own end, but the holiness that then is given to us that we would stand in the presence of his holiness in his goodness and, and in his love's pure light, right, as we say at Christmas. And that's the, the beauty of the, that, that kingdom of glory is that we will, we will be with the Lord. Thankfully, we'll get to be with those who have gone before us in the faith, but most of all, we'll be with the Lord and, and be with him and see him face to face. Uh, and what wonderful power and might and blessing for us. Thanks be to God.
All right, uh, we we'll continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.